is my mind I'm all for a good start I hear those jingle bells People singing about love It feels like I'm a kid Like I'm forever young And that's why I wanna sing about The Christmas on its way A reason to hang around And celebrate this day Everyone's smiling and it's snowing, it's the time of year again I'm happy you're here, my winter wonderland Hello crafty friends, it's Caroline and I am back today with a process video where I am going to make more of those brag books slash notebooks slash gift bag combos. Basically, I'm going to smash this whole paper pad and I'm going to do it in the same way as I did with the other one except this one has 48 sheets instead of 24. This is an older one. Some of you may have this in your stash, I don't know. Um, but I have a lot of gifts to give this year and I need to get through a bunch of it and I have a lot of paper. So this is gonna be my go-to folks. This is my go-to now, <laughs> I'm excited about it. Now, a couple things are different. I'm gonna use some cream cardstock for this one just cause it matches better. And I still haven't gotten to the store to buy some black. I don't know, Let's, <laughs> I'll do it at some point. Honestly, I'm scared to go into Michael's because I don't need any more paper. So I'm just trying to use my stash. I'll go buy some black cardstock later. <laughs> when I've used a couple more of these paper pads up. So I started looking through this, like I said, it's 48 instead of 24. So, you know, conceivably I should be able to make twice as many, right? Well, when I was looking through them though, um, some of them, and, and this also, you guys, this also has two sheets of these big four by six cut aparts, but I don't wanna use these. They're more journaling sheets. I wouldn't use these for the covers, but I would use these four. So I've got four there that I could do. And then, Lots of these pieces here for some gift bags. I've also got some six by sixes. And again, I probably wouldn't do these because they're the journaling, but I would definitely do these. So I'm thinking I might do some that are six by six. And then look at this. There's a whole nother sheet of four by sixes and I can get four of them out of here. So that gives me eight that are four by six that I can make sets for and two that are six by six that I can make sets for. So I'm going to be making 10 out of this one today. And I think that that's pretty reasonable. I've also got more of the gift bags to do in this one. Um, and I've got these great tags that I can use for my, my leftover pieces. There's this paper here that would make a great gift bag. There's this paper here that would be good for a gift bag. This paper here would make a nice gift bag. And this paper here would also make a great gift bag. So I've got four gift bag opportunities that I've identified in here, which is more than we had in the other one. So I feel like I don't know. I, I feel like we're going to be cutting it close on the paper, but I think we can do it. So <laughs> my stretch goal is 10. I may have to settle for eight, but I want to try to get 10 gift sets and four gift bags out of this paper pad. Let's see what we can do. A sunny day, but it's cold outside. In my heart Breathing air that clears my mind I'm all for a good start I hear those jingle bells People singing about love It feels like I'm a kid Like I'm forever young And that's why I want to sing about The Christmas on its way A reason to hang around And sell a this day, everyone's smiling and it's snowing. It's the time of year again. I'm happy you're here, my winter wonderland. I'm walking around making small talk with people that pass me by. I share a laugh, it gives me joy that everyone's having a good, good time. I hear those jingle bells, people singing about love It feels like I'm a kid, like I'm forever young And that's why I want to sing about the Christmas on its way A reason to hang around and celebrate this day Everyone's smiling and it's snowing, it's the time Oh, 
It's the time of year, winter wonderland <laughs> My winter wonderland It's the time of year, my winter wonderland My winter wonderland I wanna sing about the Christmas on its way A reason to hang around and celebrate this day Everyone's smiling and it's snowing It's the time of year again I'm happy you're here, my winter wonderland Oh, my winter wonderland Oh, my winter wonderland All right, so I've been working on these for a few days. And if you remember, I started with this paper pad here. It was 48 sheets. It's a huge craft smart paper pad that I purchased as a hot buy from Michaels. Oh, if it wasn't last year, it was probably the year before. I don't see a date on this one. Um, but I pulled all 48 sheets out. We've worked through this and this is what I was able to make so far. And it's a lot, you guys. I made four six by six brag book albums. I made eight four by six brag book albums and I have made so far seven of these cute little notebooks here um, that I just you know put together with some pages just like a little junk journal notebook here and I've got seven of them so far I'm getting ready to make an eight that are going to match with these and then I think I have enough to make two extras on top of that so I think all told I'm going to get 10 of these little journals I went ahead and put all of the <laughs> the little charms on the sides. I think they're super, super cute. But before I do the full walkthrough, I wanted to show you guys how I do the journals because in the last video, which is the one that I'm sort of basing this whole smashing of this paper pad from, I didn't, for, for whatever reason, it didn't record that portion. So I am gonna include that tutorial portion in this video, even though it was supposed to have been in the last video. So let's go ahead and start with that. So in choosing the papers for the brag books and for the journals, which I've, I've combined them all throughout, I was mindful of which papers were not directional. And what I mean by that is on a paper like this, I would be able to cut a four inch wide strip from this section here and still be left with a piece that's eight inches wide by 12 inches long that when turned this way becomes 12 inches wide and eight inches tall which is what I used for all of the construction of my um, journal. So I began with pieces that were eight inches tall by 12 inches wide to create those um, the covers for my journals. If it were directional, and let's say this were the top, and I went ahead and cut that, now I've only got a piece that is eight inches wide and 12 inches long in this way, and if I would go to turn it for the journal, it wasn't going to line out. So I was mindful of that when cutting the papers and um, just wanted to point that out. Now I am going to be using a tool set that I purchased off of Amazon. It was very inexpensive. I think it was like under $10. This is a little book binding tool set and I have found it to be very helpful. It came with all sorts of parts to it. I love this little tool here that allows me to punch my holes for my signatures. It gives me consistent measurements and sort of holds those papers together so I can do that. It came with an awl, it came with a whole bunch of needles, it came with a whole bunch of different book binding threads and things like that. But for today and for this purpose, I'm only using the awl, this um, spacing tool I, or puncture, puncture tool, I'm not even sure what it's called. If you guys know, let me know in the comments below. And I'm using a needle. Now, if you don't have this kit, you can certainly still do this. You can just mark like with tick marks where you want to puncture your holes along your spine. You don't have to use the needle that came with the kit. I have found that they're very similar to an upholstery needle or a darning needle or something like that. You just need something that's large enough with a large enough eye to hold whatever thread it is that you're going to use to bind it with. I have bound them in the past using upholstery thread and found that to work very well. In the last video I did, I used this really pretty baker's twine that had this sort of gold uh, metallic gold thread in there as well. But for today, I'm actually going to use ribbon because why not, right? <laughs> and I'm going to begin with a piece of ribbon that's about 24 to 30 inches long, somewhere in that range is what I have found to be long enough. Basically, it just needs to be twice the height and then a little bit of extra if you want to tie off any sort of 
um, charms or dangles or things like that. Now in preparing my signatures, I've just layered up some papers here. I've got the pattern paper that we discussed on how I sort of cut that before. And I did score that one. The rest of them I did not score, but the pattern paper I did score in half at six inches. And we're gonna cut a lot off of the edge here so that we can end up with really nice, neat, clean edges where they're all you know, flush and even for our little notebooks here. And the pages that I chose to put in here were ruled paper. They were just some plain printer paper. You can use any papers that you like. I had some of these sort of decorative papers in my stash and I thought that they would be kind of nice. They're like a, a printer pa weight paper, but they had some pretty stuff on them. Again, with some more plain paper, some more ruled paper, and then just sort of repeats like that. So we are having this oversized to begin with so we can trim it down. I got the ruled paper that is in here from notebooks like this, very similar to this one, if not identical to this one. And this is one that I purchased at Dollar General. I know they had them at Dollar Tree. These are like five by seven notebooks that I purchased there, obviously for a dollar. Some of them have the red line, some are black, some are blue. I didn't really care. This is a junk journal. It doesn't really matter, but they are stitched and that's why I picked them up and I picked them up a couple years ago. They've just been in my stash, but I do use them um, from time to time, but I want to take them apart. And to do that, I'm just going to come and clip the stitching all along on the inside of the book. And then once I've made those clips along there, it's really simple just to sort of pull the cover off like this. And I'm tossing this. It's not something that I want to keep. You could if you wanted to, but I'm just tossing it. And then I'll just pull out the little bits of thread that remain. And then from there, it was just really simple. I put them in bunches of five and bunches of three. Why? I don't know. I just did. <laughs> so I took like a group of five of them and put them in a little pile. And then I took a group of either two or three and put them in a little pile. And I continued to do that until I stacked up my piles so that I had the pages in like little groupings that I wanted to put in um, for my uh, for my junk journal, right? And so that's where I got the, the lined paper, the ruled paper. And then just for consistency and just for sort of ease, I did the same thing for all of them. I had two pieces of the printer paper folded in half. And then behind that, I had two or three, I guess it's just two pieces of the lined paper. I had one piece of this paper that was sort of a prettier paper, followed by five pieces of the ruled or lined paper, followed by another two pieces of the printer paper. And then at, on the cover was the um, pattern paper that we cut from those pieces like I showed you. Once I get all of those in place, I'm gonna sort of stack them up. Now, if you are using papers that are directional, be mindful of that, you know, where your top and your bottom is. But I'm just tapping them so that, because they're all different sizes, you know, these are oversized in places. So I'm tapping them so that they all come to the top and they're all snug in that spine. And once I get it fairly well tapped there to where I want it to be, I'm gonna slip it in this little tool here place this cover piece in and then I'm going to stand it up and give it a couple more taps while it's in here because there's a edge here that it can kind of come against and I just feel like it sort of helps that line that up and you can check at the top here if everything is lined up and flush at the top and that's that's great that's exactly what I want it to look like and you can do holes however often you want however many holes you want for the way I'm stitching this right now, I recommend using an odd number of holes. If you want, you can just do three. I'm choosing to do, what, five, I think. They're not evenly spaced. They're just sort of random, but I've kept them all the same on, on all of them, the same random pattern. So I'm going at three, eight, 14, 20, and 25. And once I've made those holes there and it's still, I'm still pressing this down in here, I'm gonna put a couple clips here just at the bottom just to hold the pages in place so that I feel like they're not gonna wiggle out of place where those initial holes that I made. Go ahead and take it out. And now I'm gonna take my awl and I'm gonna push it through even further. I'm gonna start on those little punctures that I made and I'm gonna push it all the way through to make a really wide fat hole in there. And now that all of my holes are punched and they're sized the way that I like, I'm just gonna thread my needle And beginning from the top hole on the outside, so I'm coming from the outside cover here, I'm gonna come in 
and I'm gonna leave a tail that's about six inches long. And then I'm gonna go out through the second hole from the top, in through the third hole or that middle hole, out through the fourth hole from the top, and back in through that bottom or the fifth hole. And then from here, I'm just gonna stitch right back up in another running stitch pattern, but I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. On the back side, I'm sort of pulling the stitch back a little bit to reveal the hole so that when I stitch back through, I'm not splitting the stitch, meaning I'm not taking the needle through the thread or the ribbon or whatever material you're using to stitch it with. So I'm gonna do that one, then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna kind of pull this back to reveal the opening of this hole. Then I'm gonna feed my needle through, being very careful not to catch the ribbon in this case or split the stitch on the thread if you're using thread. Back out through the second hole, same thing, being careful not to split the stitch. And then that ends your stitching right there, okay? So we can go ahead and take these off. And so now you've got your, your thread or your ribbon or whatever with your needle end that's coming out through that second hole and you have your tail remaining that went in through the first hole up here. And then all you're gonna do is just tie that off at the very top sort of parallel with that first hole once that's in place, I'm going to leave my tails just the way they are. I'm not going to trim them yet. And I probably could have done with just 24 inches of ribbon. And this is a little overkill here, but it's, it's fine. And then I'm going to give this another nice firm burnishing along the spine just to sort of help it to lay in place. I'm sort of folding those papers another time here going over it. And then once that's all in place, it's time to do some trimming. So the top here is where the tails are, right? And that's where we made sure that the paper was flush up here at the top. So we're not gonna do any trimming at that portion, but we are gonna trim on the side and on the bottom. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm using my mat to lay it out and I'm lining up my spine on just any, any ruled line that you've got here. I'm right. taking a straight edge and I decided to do these. I'm trimming them down a little bit more than where they were. I'm going to four and a quarter on this one instead of to five. The original notebook paper, if you remember, was a, in a five inch wide notebook, but I just want to give it a little extra trimming. So I'm going to go to four and a quarter, I'm sorry, four and three quarters of an inch from the spine. So I've got one, two, three, four, and one, two, three quarters of an inch towards the right hand side from the spine with the spine being on the left and I'm lining it up at the top and the bottom on the grid on my mat. And then using my finger blade, X-Acto knife, whatever tool you choose to use, I'm just gonna begin cutting this and I have to stand up for this part. So putting your blade right next to that straight edge, I'm just running it straight along here and I'm gonna continue to cut and remove pages as they sort of free themselves up here. And for me, it's taking about four to five passes and then once those are cut free, I've got a nice smooth edge here on that side. And now we're gonna cut the bottom. And so I'm doing the same thing. I'm coming in a quarter of an inch smaller than the original notebook that I harvested the ruled paper from. So in this case, I'm gonna go to six and three quarters, lining up my straight edge, taking my finger blade and just dragging that right along the edge of the straight edge to free up those papers. just like that. And so, yeah, there is a bit of waste here, but it's just the way I figured out that I could do it and still have a really nice clean finish on my notebook. My notebook is sized in a way that I like, and so that's just how I've chosen to do it. And then for continuity and to give it a nice little finish, I'm coming along here with my quarter inch corner chomper, and I'm just rounding all of the corners of these papers. I have to do them in little sections because it's too thick to cut through all of them at the same time, but you can cut through several at the same time. And that's one of the things that I like about these corner chompers is if you're doing, you know, a lot of something, they really do make light work of it because you can stack them up and do them all at the same time. And then once all of those corners are rounded, isn't that a nice little finish there? I think it looks really great. So now I'm going to add some little charms. You don't have to do this part. Oops, looks like my, I didn't get my knot tied tight enough. Um, you certainly don't have to do this part, but um, 
I am going to add some charms on here. And these are charms. I, when I buy them, I just put them all together. There are some that I've bought at Hobby Lobby. There's some that I've gotten off of AliExpress. There's just a bunch of mismatch of charms in here. And because I'm using kind of gold accents on the cover here, I'm going to stick with more of a gold theme. This one says peace on earth. I've been trying to sort of match them to something, you know, that relates to that. I've decided I want to do this Christmas tree here. I think it's really pretty. And then I'm going to grab a couple beads. And again, this is just a random collection of beads that I've purchased at Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joann's or wherever. I've just picked up some beads here and there. And then we're just going to thread them on here. So I'm going to put a charm on one of the ends, just putting it through the hole at the top of the charm, figuring out sort of how long I want it to hang. And then all I'm going to do is just tie it around there. I'm not doing anything really complex. I'm just making a knot around the charm so that it can hang at whatever length it is that I want it to hang at. And then trim my little end. I'm going to seal it with my lighter. And then just to be extra careful, I'm going to actually going to kind of seal the knot with my lighter too. I'm just going to come in here and sort of singe that knot so that it's not going to come undone either. And now for the beads, this one's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to trim off some of this. Again, I probably could have just done with a 24 inch length of, of ribbon here. I'm going to come along because I don't want it. My needle's not going to fit through the hole of these beads. So on your ribbon, you have on either side, I'm using double face satin here. And on either side of it, there is like a thicker end where it's been woven in a way where it sort of creates an edge banding on there. And I'm just going to slice right up along the edge of one of those sides with that edge banding. Okay. And then I'm going to come at a really um, small angle out. So I'm just a very slight angle out. So I'm creating this long, narrow piece here on my ribbon itself. Okay. But this portion here is that sort of doubled up woven edge banding. And it's kind of acting as a way that it can just be fed through these beads then for me without having to really work too hard at it. I've got a frayed end here, so I'm just going to clip it, give it a fresh little clip, and then start feeding my beads through there. And once that gets started and starts coming through, when you start pulling it on up, it's probably going to fray, but that's okay. We're going to get it on there. I've had to use my pliers to sort of grab a hold of the ribbon and just to give me a little bit of leverage to get it over that little hump. And then each time that happens and these start fraying, I'm just gonna clip off these extra pieces that are fraying there because they're just gonna create bulk for the next one coming through. And then I'm gonna put this piece through. I'm alternating the, the beads here. And you choose whatever bead pattern you wanna follow. It doesn't have to be the same beads. It doesn't have to be the same pattern. You don't have to put beads on here at all. I just like the way it looks. And as you can tell, I've had to trim it a couple times with each bead, which is just fine. But once I get them all in, I push them all the way up to the top. I'm going to tie my knot to wherever the length is I want it to be. Trim my ends. Singe them. And singe the knot. And then the beads will just fall right down to the ends there. And we've got our beads on our little, um, our little ties here. And I think they look really cute. So now all we need to do is put our book plate on. And then I'm going to add some little pockets on the inside or at least some little tuck spots. And then for the book plate, I'm just using one of the cut aparts, the same cut aparts that I used for the covers of my brag books. And I'm layering it up on a piece of gold shimmer cardstock. And we're just going to glue that down. And then once that's on, let's go ahead and put our little pocket pieces on the inside here. The papers that I'm using for the pockets were just some scraps that I had. And I did go ahead and cut a little notch on the inside um, in what I thought would be about the halfway point. And I'm going to trim them down to the length of the book, but I'm actually going to trim them a little bit long. See, I've got about a quarter of an inch or so longer than it needs to be. And that's because I want to be able to trim it to fit once I get it in place. So all I'm gonna do is take some glue and I'm gonna go on three sides. I'm gonna do the top, the bottom, and I'm doing about a quarter of an inch wide strip of glue, which is more than I usually do, but I think um, it just keeps it extra strong. Also, it's sort of like doubling up on the edge of the cover. It gives it a little bit of extra um, you know, reinforcement there. 
and then I'm going to place it along the edge. making sure I'm flush on the top and the side here. And then on this bottom piece where I've got some overhang, oops, let me line this up a little better. On this bottom piece where I've got some overhang, I'm just gonna clip it off with my scissors just so that it's the right height for this particular book. While I cut all of them, you know, the same height, I could have been off just slightly. And so this just makes sure I get a more custom fit. And then I'm going to come over my edges again with my quarter inch corner rounder and clean that up. And now we've got our little pocket or tuck spot or whatever in place there. I did make tags as well. And so they will fit right inside of here, which I think is pretty great. And then let's go to the back one. And on this one, I, I made them larger on some of the other ones. I just didn't have any more paper left. So this is just what I had left on this one. And it's smaller but it will still work <laughs> it's not going to be a problem and so I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on two sides on this one on the right side and on the bottom again about a quarter of an inch wide of glue so a pretty hefty band of glue there line that up give it a good burnishing trim that corner to match and there we have it, we are finished. And so then any one of these little tags or whatever you wanna stick in here is gonna be able to fit in the back just fine. In fact, I'm not gonna put that one in there because these are gonna be my little two froms. These were also in the collection, aren't they cute? I just cut them out and backed them on some of the scraps of the 110 pound cardstock that we used. And that's how I made these very simple little junk journals to go with my little gift set. So let's take an assessment of what we have remaining for our paper pad that we're gonna smash here. Cause I'm still very much intent on getting rid of all of them. So these were the two extras that I made. I haven't put my little dangles on here yet, but I was able to make two extra notebooks as well. I've got these two cut aparts remaining. I might use those for some decoration. I've got these two strips here of some pattern paper, and then I have these larger pieces here that I want to use to make some gift bags with. I originally thought I was going to make more of the gift bags, and I'll show you what I did with some of those cutoffs. I wasn't able to do that, but instead I'm going to I'm going to try to make three or try to make two. Looks like I've got enough here for two of the gift bags. This is an extra piece. I might end up doing like a small gift bag with this. I'm not sure yet, but let's figure it out. I am gonna link the video in the description notes below where I go into detail on making the gift bag so you guys can hop on over there and look at that. For this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it. Doesn't matter if the snow is falling or the windows in the rain is pouring It will always be Christmas in my heart Santa's coming to visit No, he wouldn't miss this In Christmas times
recap all the things that I've made, I was able to make not one, but two of these giant 12 by 12 gift bags and I think they turned out really pretty. I like them a lot. On this one I tied the ribbons on the outside of the bag. On this one I tied them on the inside. I don't know that it matters. I was just sort of playing around with it but I will link the video in the description notes below where I show how I make these bags. And you can make a 12 by 12 gift bag like this just using four sheets of pattern paper and it's a really great way to kind of put together um, a quick gift bag, but it's also a great way to use up those large 12 by 12 pieces that you've got in those collections. I also made eight of these four by six brag books. They're all identical on the inside. They've got their pattern paper on the back, just different pattern papers on the back. And I'm gonna open up one just to show you what they all look like inside. And we've got some pattern papers on all the pages. There's no pockets. It's not doing anything, you know, crazy. It's just a great little brag book, something that's ready for you to place all of your photos or your journaling or whatever it is that you want to put into your little brag books. They're also really sturdy. There's just a simple hinge spine here on it and um, they're very sturdy books. They're gonna hold up really well in a purse or a backpack or in your car or something like that. In addition to the four by six brag books, this collection also had some six by six cut aparts and so I was able to make four of these six by six brag books and on the backs of some of them I put a little cut apart just a decorative element with a sort of a book plate tag here that you can write what's inside of it on the backs of these I just left them plain although I may end up adding the actual gift tag on here I'm not sure I haven't decided yet on those and on the insides of them, they're identical with their counterparts, but they do vary slightly in each of them. This one has a little journaling page on the inside front cover. This one just has a, a nice little place that you can put a photo or journal, either way. I've got pockets throughout many of them, and that's because I didn't have quite enough pattern paper to put on everything. So on these, these were the cut apart strips, the long 12 inch wide cut apart strips. And I just used those to make some simple pockets that are glued down on three sides. I went ahead and put in some of the tags that I had made both from the cut aparts in the collection and just from the cutoffs that I had from my 110 pound cardstock when I was constructing them. Some of these papers like this one here, I had originally thought I might use to make a gift bag and just decided to go ahead and use that in here. I like the way it laid out and I thought it looked really nice. And then we've also got other pages that are just blank, which is great for adding photos or journaling or whatever. Some more of the pocket pages here as well. And then that is it for our brag book. And then we made eight of the journals that all have the same cut apart front covers as our four by six brag books and I went through how I made all of those in this video. I also was able to get two extra junk journals out of there. I don't have covers for them yet, but I'll come up with something for them. I just had some extra papers on those, so I went ahead and made those up into some extra junk journals as well. In addition to all the tags that are throughout both the junk journals, because they all have tags inside of them too, as well as the brag books, I've also managed to come up with six of these gift tags, these little two from holiday gift tags that were left over from the cut aparts in the collection. The two large 12 by 12 gift bags that I just showed you, and out of this entire 12 by 12 paper pad, 48 sheets, the only remaining sheets I have is I have one full 12 by 12 sheet here, I've got a couple pieces here and then these few little cutoffs and that's it. These are the only scraps I have from the whole project and that makes me so very happy. I may end up making something with these or I may toss them and I feel okay with that. I feel like I've made enough. So just to recap, I made two of the 12 by 12 gift bags. I made eight of the decorated junk journals that match eight of the four by six brag books and I also made four of the six by six brag books as well as a smattering of two from tags and even was able to get two extra little journals out of all of it. Yay! I'm so happy. I think this is fabulous. This is actually the third collection that I've done this for this holiday season 
and this is what I'm relying on for my gift giving. I have been able to make a total of 21 of the four by six brag books. I've got eight of the six by sixes and I've got at least two dozen of these little junk journals that I was able to make along with a bunch of other tags. So <laughs> out of three different collections, I've made a lot for this particular collection. This is what I've made here that is showing here today. These are simple projects and I've been giving myself a lot of grace with them. I've only been working on them an hour or two here and there. And so they've come together over a week's period of time, but I'm really happy with the way they turned out. And yeah, I feel really good about it. Plus I'm getting rid of a lot of paper in my stash and that feels really nice too. All right, y'all, that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope you're having a fabulous day. I hope you're being kind to yourselves and I hope you're finding some joy in your journey. Thanks so much everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. It's the time of year, winter wonderland my winter wonderland is the time of year My winter wonderland, my winter wonderland I wanna sing about the Christmas on its way